At some point in time, you may have learned this chord and asked yourself, why? What am I supposed to do with that? At least I know that was my response when I first figured out what a diminished chord was. So if there's all sorts of theory on how to resolve these chords and what to do with them, I don't want to go too detailed here. I just want to give you some really quick and easy methods of just using this chord. You don't necessarily need to understand why it works all the time. Sometimes it's just about using something and being exposed to it and writing with it. And then later on down the line, maybe you get inspired to figure out, hey, why does this actually work and what can I do extra with it? In which case then you go learn the advanced theory on voice leading and that sort of thing. But like I said in this video, I just want to give you five little ways that you can just start using the diminished chord without thinking too much about music theory. You are going to want to know your diatonic chords. You probably should know the chords of major and the chords of minor, and you should know what a diminished seventh chord is. Those would be good prerequisite videos for this one, so I've linked to them in the description. But I want to get started. The first way I can use a diminished chord is to bridge the gap between two major chords that are a whole step apart. For example, a C major chord is a whole step away from a D major chord. That's a whole step gap in between, and in between those notes C and D, there's a C sharp. And I can just plop a C sharp diminished in there and kind of bridge the gap between those two. Take a listen, I've got C major, I've got C sharp diminished, and that will pull me to D major. Funny little resolution right there, but it works very well to kind of give us some chromatic passage between those two chords. Now if you do know some theory, you might realize, hey, this is the four chord and the five chord in the key of G. So you might be able to apply this by thinking, hey, if I'm in the key of G, I can start on my one chord, I can go to my four chord, and then I can play that diminished chord to get me to my five chord, and then resolve back to G. Also, if you can think relatively, you might realize, hey, this is also the key of E minor, right? G major and E minor. So I could start on an E minor, for example, right? And bring in that same change from a C major to a C sharp diminished to a D major, Right, gives me a nice little change to resolve to the key of E minor as well. Now also in the key of G or the key of E minor, I have a whole step distance between my five chord and my six chord. So from D major to E minor, that's a whole step distance. And in between, I have the note D sharp or E flat. And I can throw a diminished chord right there, D major, E flat diminished to E minor to give me a really nice creeping up effect from the five chord to the six chord. I consider this to be pretty common. Maybe the most common usage of a diminished chord is to bridge that little gap between my five chord and my six chord. I just heard it in uh, Adele's When We Were Young. Uh, if that song was in the key of G, we end up doing this walk down here from the six to the five. We borrow the four, and then here's our two. It was just like a movie to the five. It was just like a song. And now the diminished chord to take us to E minor. When we were young. They walk down through some diatonic chords again. Another two to the five. And then once again to bring in that diminished chord to take us to E minor. And you can hear there, once again, just these half measures of diminished. Diminished is pretty disruptive, right? So it's pretty common to only hear like split measures where this diminished chord is only happening in half the measure to take you somewhere else. Pretty rare to hear it in an entire instance. Next easy way to use a diminished seventh chord is to just make a two chord jam out of it. And here's what you do. You pick any diminished seventh chord. All right, I'll just put my fingers on my guitar and play this chord. And I can pick any note. All right, literally any note works here. I'm going to pick this note that my index finger is playing. It's playing a C. So I'm going to think of this as a C diminished. Then I'm going to resolve down a whole step. What's a whole step down from C? What's two frets down from C? Well, that's B flat. So I'm just going to play a B flat minor. All right? So I've got this chord, which is C diminished, and it's resolving to B flat minor. And I love this kind of jam as like a little spicy salsa, Latin, Santana-esque jam. And I swear, I mean, I can jam for hours on top of that. That chord progression, that two to one, is diatonic to harmonic minor. So you can shred over the harmonic minor scale over that. And it actually works great with just natural minor and pentatonic over the top of it. Another really easy way to use the diminished chord is in a 2-5-1 context. So let's go back to uh, this chord I was just playing. I was just playing this chord and calling it a C diminished because it had a C in it. If this is my 2 chord, 
right? We already figured out that B flat minor would be my one chord. But instead of going straight to my one chord, let's stop off at my five chord first. What's the five chord in the key of B flat? Well, that would be an F, right? So we'll play an F major after my, my C diminished. Here's C diminished, which is my two. Let's go to the five chord, which is F, and then resolve to my one. And you can hear that's got a very strong kind of medieval renaissance cadence to it, right? I really like it, and I think it's a very easy way to just start applying that. Now, even though I said it's like an old-timey renaissance flair, we've actually heard this in uh, somewhat modern music. Bonnie Tyler's Holding Out for a Hero has this hilariously extended version of a 2-5-1 progression where they just keep building on the two chord for quite a while until they finally go to the five chord to suspend it and then finally take us back to the tonic. It's really outrageous that it lasts that long. I just talked to you about you know, how diminished chords usually occur sparingly. Here's an example of that rule just being shattered and just laying on the diminished thick to really build up some insane, hilarious suspense. Diminished seventh chords can also be used as a portal to whole new universes. Basically, a diminished chord, since any note can be the root, it can resolve to a lot of different keys. I told you that we can resolve two frets down to a minor chord, right? Here's C diminished, resolving two frets down to B flat minor, right? But it could also resolve to B flat major. So when I realized that this chord has so many different ways to resolve, I realized, hey, this is a good way to get around and modulate to different keys. I did a whole video on diminished chord portals that demonstrated this idea. But long story short, if I'm in B flat minor, and I, if I'm playing off my two chord, is like a two chord jam, knowing that I can use that two chord to pivot back into B flat major opens up a very easy transition for a Picardy third into a whole different tonality here, right? So I would like to think that whenever that diminished chord pops up, I can use that as a crossroads to get to a brand new key. Lastly, diminished chords can just be built off the one chord, and then you have like an embellished one chord. So for example, if I'm an E minor, and then if I bring in an E diminished, that would just be known as an, a common diminished chord. And you can hear it's just a nice embellishment of my one chord. I wouldn't think of this as changing keys, really. I just think of it as a way to kind of distort my one chord. Orchestra Studio has a really great video on this. It's very short, and it gives you a few different examples of the usage of the common diminished chord. One of my favorite examples of this being used is in Dream Theater's Fatal Tragedy, right at the beginning. We pivot from an E minor to an E diminished, and even the lyrics kind of complement that twisting of a minor chord into a diminished chord. Alone at night, I feel so strange. So I know all these examples have kind of ignored voice leading altogether, and that's an important topic, but I find it's more important to just learn things, start using them immediately, and then as you get confronted with problems with those things, or you start you know, running out of mileage with the things you've learned, then you go explore the deeper details of it. For me, diminished chords were really boring because I just had no way to use them. It wasn't until I finally wrote with one and thought, hey, that's actually a cool chord and it's actually usable. But I didn't have the motivation to learn about them when I just read about them or heard about them. It wasn't until I was using it, until I started confronting it and being exposed to it, where I became interested in knowing, hey, how does this chord actually work? What can I actually do with it? So hopefully this video gives you some ideas to just start writing with it, and then maybe on down the line you pursue your studies a little further to figure out exactly how these chords can fit into different keys, how you can use voice leading to help resolve them, all that kind of good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you can thank my Patreon supporters for making them possible. If you really enjoyed this video, you can join them over at my Patreon, but if you can't do that, just like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff helps me out. Thanks for watching.